Tucked away along Shore Road in Hythe, Hampshire, is an unlikely Grade II listed building. During the Great War, the shipbuilders May Harden and May Limited erected a large hangar at Hythe known as the Admiralty Shed to build sea, plane and flying boat hulls for the Admiralty. The depot was constructed by John Moulin & Co between 1917 and 1918 and consisted of a large construction hangar, concrete apron and a slipway into Southampton Water. Designed by Her Majesty's Office of Works under Sir Frank Baines, the early intact sawtooth profile North Light roof is unique in the context of World War I flying boat factory hangars. The roof displays a stage in manufacturing workshops, solving the problem of spanning large surface areas without the need for intervening columns and thereby freeing up a floor area necessary in the first place to work on the wingspan of aircraft. To meet their expanding production requirements for Southampton II and Seagull aircraft, and in a reversal of the earlier process, Supermarine used the Admiralty Shed for final assembly and flight testing of hulls constructed and towed across from their Wollstone Works. With the acquisition of Supermarine by Vickers in 1928, the sheds acquired their distinctive Vickers Supermarine Works name emblazoned across the roof. Although sometimes confused with the early seaplane hangars at Cowshot, they were used primarily for the garaging of seaplanes, not production. By the mid-1930s, Hythe was engaged in the construction of the Seagull 5 for the Australian Navy and then its Royal Navy incarnation, the Walrus, as well as Stran Ras for the Royal Air Force. As before, hulls were constructed in Wilson and towed to Hythe for completion, a journey that could prove eventful as a three-mile trip crossed the path of the great ocean liners and merchant ships entering Southampton docks. From 1937, the Hyde Depot, including the hangar, was also involved in the introduction of the airmail service when parts of the works was leased to Imperial Airways as a maintenance depot for their Empire flying boats. Passengers were usually taken by bus to Hythe to board the aircraft having checked in and cleared customs and immigration at one of the Southampton dock terminals. Imperial Airways had, through negotiations with the British government, established the Empire Air Mail Scheme, which was an intercontinental air service linking the countries of the British Empire. On Sunday, July the 9th, 1939, a Pan American Airways flying boat, the Yankee Clipper, landed on Southampton water carrying 19 passengers. The 37-ton flying boat had just inaugurated the first regular transatlantic air passenger service between America and England, a journey that had taken 27 hours. Yankee Clipper alighted in Southampton water off the Empire Air Base at Hythe and picked up a mooring reported the Daily Echo the following day. Even when, with the advent of the Second World War, the Empire service was transferred to Pool Harbour, maintenance of the flying boats was retained at Hythe. During the Second World War, the Hythe site undertook work under contract for the War Department, which included the repair, maintenance and modification of four Heinkel 115s, which were used to take agents into German-occupied areas. When the war finished, the British Overseas Air Corporation, the successor of Imperial Airways, brought their commercial flying operation to Hythe. But the company changed to land-based aircraft, and in December 1949, the BOAC flying boat service ceased, and the Hythe base was closed. In 1953, the base was taken over by the Royal Navy, as a care and maintenance base for minesweepers called HMS Diligence and remained as such until 1963 when it was closed again. In 1966 Her Majesty's Government offered the Hive Depot to the US Army and the US Field Army Support Brigade Combat Equipment Battalion Hive took over. 
for administrative purposes, all American bases in the UK needed to have a British name, and the base became RAF Hive. With their departure, the site became the Hive Marine Park, home to a number of maritime and marine projects, including the development of the high-tech carbon fibre hulls of both Rita and T3 test boats for the 2017 America's Cup.